All right, we are back and we're going to talk about example four. But before we do, we need to talk about this concept um, of a midpoint. Now, what we're about to do is we're about to define what a midpoint is, okay? So what that means is we are talking about the definition of a midpoint. And this is really super important because later you're going to be um, doing proofs and the reason why you're gonna say something is because of the definition of a midpoint. And so there's gonna be all different types of definitions. You're gonna have definitions of all different things and then you're gonna have postulates and theorems and corollaries. But this is called definition of a midpoint. So this should be a flashcard. You should have the definition of a midpoint. You should write down, and then in a little bit, I'm gonna talk about a variety of different equations, and you should all put them under definition of a midpoint, okay? Okay, so where's my little flashcard? It's a flashcard alert, flashcard. This needs to be in a flashcard or a note card. You need to go back over these, make beautiful little flashcards. Okay, that's what this is. Okay, so midpoint, M, M is for midpoint of line segment AB is the point that bisects, okay, this is a vocabulary term, bisects, that just means, that's a lovely word for just it cuts it in half, cuts, oh, cuts it in half, that's what bisects means, cuts it in half, so commit that to memory. So the midpoint of AB is the point that bisects or divides the segment into two congruent segments. Boom. So this states that if M is the midpoint, so M is the midpoint of AB, then we know it cuts it in half, right? So that means if it's in half, then this is exactly the same as this, which means we can put a tick mark there. And we have this lovely formula right here. AM is equal to MB. All right, so this just says, so if AB, the whole thing is six, well, it cuts it in half, so this distance has to be the, the, the same as this. So if the whole thing's six, that means this is three and that's three. So AM is three and MB is three. Three plus three is six. Okay, that is definition of a midpoint. However, we are going to take it one step further. So we know definition of a midpoint, we know that this is equal to this, right? That is one equation, but there's actually five equations that you can make from definition of a midpoint. And so I'm gonna write them all over here, and then you need to make sure that those are on your note card and you commit them to memory. It's gonna make everything a lot easier. Trust me on that. Uh, okay, so the first one is what we just went over. AM is equal to MB. Right? That's the first equation. So make sure on your flashcard you have this picture here. Definition of a mid midpoint, you have this. And then on the back side, you probably want to have to have the equations because you want to memorize all five of them. The second thing is, uh, let's talk about the whole thing, AB. AB is the same thing as two... AMs. So think about that. Let's go back here. If AB is 6, right, that whole thing is 6, and AM is 3, well, this is the same thing, right? So this is basically AM, and this is AM because they're the same. So that's 3 and 3. So it's basically 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so AB, the whole thing is really just the same thing as AM, 2 AMs. Okay, so that's the second one. The third one, let's stay with AB, 
is the same thing as two. So if it's the same thing as two AMs, well, that means it's the same thing as two MBs. Right, if MB is three, then this is also the same thing. So we could call this MB, so then you'd have two times three, which is also six. All right, so that's three. The fourth one is talking about AM. Oh, that's not AM, that is AB. Okay, so AM, sorry about that. AM, this part right here is the same thing as half of the whole thing, AB. So think about that. If we know AB is six, half of six is three, which is AM. So that's the fourth thing. And the last one, we talked about AM here. Let's talk about MB. MB, this part right here, is the same thing as half of the whole, which is AB. So those are all five, and think about that, right? So if the whole thing is six, you put that in for AB, half of six would be three, which is the same thing that MB is. So that's five equations. The first one, AM is equal to MB, right? It bisects, it cuts, it cuts in half, those two are the same. The second one, AB is equal to two AMs. The third one, AB is equal to two MBs. The fourth one, this AM is equal to half of the whole thing. And lastly, MB is equal to half of the whole thing. So one, two, three, four, five. Five definitions, five equations you need to know definition of a midpoint. Any of, whenever you hear about a midpoint, there's gonna be a variety of problems. You're gonna to have to know which of these equations you're going to choose. And we'll do some different uh, problems coming up and so I'll show you how to know which of these equations to use. All right, perfect. Let's move on to example four. Okay, example four, I'm just gonna kind of have it like this. We're gonna move it up here. So example four states, this is a little story problem. The map shows the route for a race. You are at X, uh, 6,000 feet from the first checkpoint C. Um, the second checkpoint is D, is located at the midpoint between C and the end of the race, Y. The total race is three miles. How far apart are the two checkpoints? Okay. All right, so what I think I wanna do is I wanna come back to this problem and we're actually gonna go to example five because I think I just wanna practice definition of a midpoint and practicing these five and those problems are just gonna require a little bit more. And I just wanna practice definition of a midpoint right now. So we're gonna to go to example five and work on that first, and then we'll come back to example four and discuss that, okay? So uh, I just wanna do something a little bit more straightforward. So it says D is the midpoint of EF. Boom, what did it just say? It said the key word, midpoint. When you see that, you should know, oh my goodness, I can do definition of a midpoint. You should get your flashcard out. Therefore, you know you can do any of these. You can use all five of these equations. AM equals MB, AB equals 2 AM, all of them. All of them. I'm not even going to read through them. There's five of them. We just talked about them. So, okay, but that's the key word. Boom, right here. It should be like a siren going off in your head. Do, 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 do. Oh, I can use definition, definition of a midpoint. Five equations. All right. So D is the midpoint of EF. D is the midpoint of EF. Perfect. Then it says ED is equal to 4X plus 6. DF is equal to 7X minus 9. Oh, it wants us to find ED, DF, and EF. Okay. So definition of a midpoint. 
I'm going to go ahead and write down those five equations according to this, right? So the first one is just stating that ED is equal to DF. ED is equal to DF. The second one was the whole thing, right? So EF, EF is equal to two EDs. The third one was EF is equal to two of the other ones, DF. The fourth one was a part of it. ED is equal to half of the whole thing, which is EF. And the fifth one was DF. Well, D, F is equal to, that, that half is equal to half of the whole thing, which is E, F. All right, cool. So we have to find everything, right? Um, so the key thing is, is what is the given information that they give us? So the given information that they give us is that E, D is equal to 4X plus 6 and D, F is is equal to 7x minus 9. So this is really how you know which equation to use. So that's the given information, right? That's the given. That's what they give us. So I go over here to my five equations. And I just highlight the equations that have ED and DF in them. So ED is here, right? ED is also here. ED, ED is here, and that's it. That's all the places where ED is that given information. DF is right here. DF, DF, DF is right here. DF is right here. So how you know which of the five equations you want to use the, um, you want to pick the equation where you have both of the pieces of information. And that would be right here. See how they're both highlighted? I know the value of ED and I also know the value of DF because they the problem gave us both of those. The problem didn't tell us anything about EF, so we don't know that. So I wouldn't use this equation because I don't know the value of EF. I wouldn't use this equation because I don't know the value of EF. I wouldn't use this because I don't know the value. I wouldn't use this one. So that's why I like to highlight you can see that both are highlighted. That means I have the information, so this would be the equation that I would choose. All right? So then I just write it down right here. ED equals... Let me scoot over. ED equals DF. And the reason why I can write that equation is because of the wonderful, magnificent definition of a midpoint. All right, so now I have my equation, then I just substitute those values in. So ED is the same thing as 4X plus 6 equals DF is 7X minus 9. All right, that's just substitution. And then from here, we're just gonna use algebra and solve, right? So there's x's on two different sides of the equation. I'm gonna move the smaller one, so I'm gonna subtract 4x to both sides. That cancels. I am left with 3x minus nine. That is the subtraction property of equality, okay? Um, and then I simplified it. Okay, I'm trying to get x by itself, so I gotta get rid of this nine. The inverse operation would be to add nine to both sides. Guess what that's called? I can do that because that is called the addition property of equality. Okay, then I'm gonna simplify. Six plus nine is 15 equals three x, that cancels. And then what? Got to get x by itself. So this is 3 times x. The inverse operation would be division. Divide by 3 to both sides. And I end up with 15. Oh, I'm going to write division property of equality. 15 divided by 3 is 5 equals 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is just x. That's simplifying. But then 
I want the x on the left side, x equals five. Does anybody know, remember what that's called, why I can do that? It is the symmetric, you remember that? Great job, symmetric property of equality. So boom, there you go. So you have to have all of this right here for your homework, all of this. If you think you can do that, go for it. That is awesome. But this right here, this is what you have to have. I'm really paying attention to this right here. You need to have these symbols, the equation written in symbols. Super important. Okay, perfect. So that's that problem there. Let's go on to the next. Okay, S is the midpoint of RT. So let's look at that. S is the midpoint of RT. Boom, what is that? That is the midpoint, which means we can use the definition of a midpoint, which is five equations. So we're gonna go write all those five equations down right now. Okay, so what do we know first? Uh, whenever we hear the midpoint, we know it's the definition of midpoint, so we can write down RS is the same thing as ST. So that's the first, that's an R. RS is equal to ST, that's the first one. The second one we can write down is that um, the whole thing, right? So RT, RT, the whole thing is equal to two times RS, that piece. The third one is the whole thing, RT, right, is equal to two STs. The fourth thing is, oh, we're just gonna do a part. So RS is equal to one half of the whole, which is RT. And then the fifth one is ST. This is equal to one half of the whole thing, which would be RT. Perfect. There are our five definitions for definition of a midpoint. Okay, so now let's look at the given information. What are they giving us? Well, they give us RS is equal to negative 2X, and they give us ST is equal to negative 3X minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that given information over here. So RS is equal to negative 2X comma ST is equal to negative 3X minus 2, and that's given information. Now we need to figure out which of those five uh, formulas that we're going to use. So I'm going to highlight everywhere there's an RS. So right here there's an RS. Right here there's an RS. There's an RS right here. And that's it. And then I'm going to write uh, highlight everywhere there's an ST. So there's an ST right there. There's an ST right there, and there's an ST right there. So I want to use the equation where everything is highlighted in that equation because that means I have that given information. And if you see that, that's that first one right here, RS equaling ST. And so that's the equation I'm going to use. So I'm going to write that. RS is equal to ST, those two are equal. It's definition of midpoint, we know. Boom, boom, those are the same thing, so we can just set those two things equal to each other because of the wonderful, magnificent definition of a midpoint. Boom. Then we just go ahead and we substitute those values in. So RS is the same thing as negative 2X equals, ST is the same thing as negative 3X minus 2, that's substitution. Then we just do algebra. So um, there's X's on uh, two different sides, I'm gonna move it. This X is over here on this side by itself, so I'm just gonna do the inverse operation and move this, so this is negative, so I'm gonna inverse would be a positive, adding 3X to both sides. That cancels, that is called the addition property of equality. And negative 2x plus 3x is just a regular x, which is super nice. And then that cancels, just negative two, that's just simplifying, right? 
And boom, we are done. That is nice. The X is on here on the left. I didn't even have to do the symmetric property of equality. That's it. So I like that one. That's a nice one. So just make sure you have all this. This is this is what this is how you do your homework, okay? So if you don't remember, go ahead, come back, review to your notes. And then there you go. That will show you how to do it. But let's go back. Okay, we kind of skipped ahead to example five. So let's go back to example four. Okay, we're going to look at this story problem and work it out. So now that we've practiced definition of midpoint a couple times. Um, okay, so let's read this again. Example four, recreation application. Okay, the map shows the route for a race. You are at X, 6,000 feet from the first checkpoint. So that means from here to here, it's 6,000 feet. Okay. All right. I understand that. From here to here, 6,000 feet. Got it. The second checkpoint, D, is located at the midpoint. Oh, shoot. It, they just said it. They said the word midpoint. So therefore, we know that we can use the definition of a midpoint and five equations. All right, okay, but let's keep here. The second checkpoint, D, is located at the midpoint between C and Y, so therefore, we know that these two things are equal. Okay, so we this is, this is the midpoint thing, okay? All right, and the end of the race, Y, okay, so between C, so D is the midpoint between C and the end of the race, Y. The total race is three miles, so from X to Y, and I'm guessing that they're saying that it is 15,840 because there are 5,280 feet in a mile, and if it's three miles, then you'd multiply it by three, three times that, three times zero is zero, three times eight is four, carry the two, three times two is six, plus two would be eight, three times five is 15. So yeah. That's how many feet are in a mile. There's three miles. So this is just how many feet, 15,840 are in three miles. Okay. All right, the total race is three miles. How far apart are the two checkpoints? Okay, so the first checkpoint would be C and the second checkpoint would be D. Um, how far apart are these? So I think if they want to know how far apart these are, then we just need to find the distance of CD, right? The distance of CD is going to tell us how far apart, um, what the how how far apart those are. Okay, I think we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. Um, Okay, so since we're doing definition of a midpoint, right, let's go ahead and find the, um, write down the, uh, what are we writing down? We're going to write down the five uh, equations. So, the first equation would be, first equation would be just CD is equaling to DY, right? CD is equal to DY. The second equation is the whole thing. CY is equal to two CDs. The third thing would be CY is equal to two DYs. The fourth thing would be, we just look at the little bit. So CD is equal, that's half of the whole thing, which would be CY. And then the other part would be DY that is half of the whole thing, CY. Okay, so there's our lovely five equations for definition of minimum point. We're gonna use one of these at some, time, at some point. Um, I'm not exactly sure, I just wanna have them all here. But uh, there's a couple other things we have to do. So I'm pretty sure we wanna find the distance between this, so we wanna figure out, well, what is CD? That's what we fi wanna figure out. So, um, what it does is it gives us this XC and it gives us this whole piece, right? 
but we don't know this difference, this distance right here from CY. So this is almost like a two-part problem. And um, the reason I say that is I'm gonna make a different picture of this right here and see if there's something, because there's a lot going on in this picture, right? So they use midpoint, we know definition of midpoint, boom, bitty, boom, 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 but look at this, X, C, Y, this X, C is 6,000, but from X to Y, it is 15,840 feet. What does this look like? We have a part, we have a part, and we have the whole. We really need to know this CY distance because that's gonna help us with the definition of a midpoint, figuring out what the distance of CD is. Does anybody know what we would use for this? That is a segment addition postulate. So if you got that right, awesome job, good work. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write our given information first. This is gonna be so fun. This one's gonna, this is problem's kind of complicated. All right, so um, let's write our given information. So uh, I'm gonna write XC, maybe I'll use a different color. I'm using a lot of purple. Okay. Um, XC is equal to 6,000. And then I know this whole thing, which is XY is equal to 15,840, right? But I don't know what C what. That's what I need to figure out. So I am going to do my segment addition postulate, which is symbols XC plus CY equals the whole thing, which is XY, right? Oh, this is my given information. This is so fun. Okay, this is given, and then why can I say this? What's the reason? Yes, segment addition postulate. And the more you do these, the more you abbreviate because you get tired of writing segment addition postulate. So I just write seg, adi, pos. Okay, so then we're going to substitute in there. So XC is 6,000. Substitute CY, I don't know, I'm trying to figure that out. XY is 15,840. I can do that because that is substitution. Okay, okay. Then what do I do? Oh, gotta get CY by itself. So I'm gonna subtract 6,000 to both sides. Yeah, it cancels out. CY is equal to, um, I don't know, I gotta do it over here on the side. This is my little side piece of paper. I'm gonna do this right here really quick, subtract. Can you see that? I'm sorry if you couldn't. Uh, zero, four, eight, I uh, gotta borrow 15, take away six, six, or nine. So there you have it, 9,840. Oh, shoot, I forgot to say that was the subtraction property of equality, property of equality, and then I just simplified. Simplify. All right, perfect. So, all right, now we know what CY is, right? So we're trying to figure out CD, okay? Because that's the distance between those two checkpoints. So let's go over. Remember we wrote all those, um, whatchamacallits down? What did we write down? We wrote down all the five formulas. Oh, this is so fun. I hope that, yeah, okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the five formulas. I need a highlighter. Let's use orange. Okay, perfect. So we know that CY is equal to 9,840, right? So that's kind of like, it, the problem didn't give us that information. We actually had to solve it, but now we have it. Uh, so I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna highlight all the equations that have CY in them. So this has CY, this has CY, and this has CY, and this has CY. And then what am I trying to figure out? Well, I'm trying to figure out CD, right? And I don't have the value for CD right now, but that's what I need to figure out. And so I'm gonna highlight what has CD. So this has CD here. Here's a CD, and 
here's a CD, and that's it. So I'm going to choose one of those equations where both of them are highlighted. Can you see? So I can really choose this one here or this one here. They're both highlighted. But here they're not highlighted, so I wouldn't choose those. Now, CY equals 2CD or CD equals 1 half CY. I think I'm going to choose this one. At this point, it doesn't matter, but this one to me, I, I don't know. I feel like not dealing with the fraction, so I'm going to use this one. So boom, that's what I'm going to write. So I'm going to take it over here. And the next thing I'm going to write is this right here. CY, just the whole thing, is equal to two CDs. I know that because of the wonderful, magnificent definition of a midpoint. Definition of midpoint. Definition of midpoint. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. CY is equal to two CDs. Can you see that? Okay, and the reason why I can write that is because of the definition of a midpoint. And look at there, that's how you abbreviate midpoint. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to substitute this value in for CY, right, that I just figured out. So instead of writing CY, I'm going to write 9,840 equals 2 CDs. And I can do that because of the substitution property of, no, I just think it's called substitution. Okay. And now I'm ready to figure out what CD is. I got to get CD by itself. This is 2 times CD, so inverse operation of multiplication would be division. I'm going to divide both sides by, C, uh, by 2. So that is the division property of equality. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over to the side because I don't really know what that is. I'm going to use my brain and not a calculator. So 9,840 divided by 2. 2 goes into 9 how many times? Uh, 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, subtract. 9 take away 8 is 1. I'm going to drop that down. 8. Uh, 2 goes into 18 9 times. 9 times 2 is 18. No remainder. Perfect. But I still have stuff to drop down, so I'm going to drop down that 4. 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 times 4 is 4. Then I subtract, and there's no remainder, but there's another 0, so I still have to drop it down. And 2 doesn't go into 0, so it goes in there 0 times, and 0 times 2 is 0. And now remainder 0, nothing else, so boom, there's my answer. CD is equal to 4,920. And that is simplifying, simplifying, simplify. But I want to have CD on the left side. And so when I flip it right there, um, that's called the symmetric property of equality. So there we have it. CD, uh, the distance between C and D, the length of CD is 4,920 feet. So it says the total race is three miles. How far apart are the two checkpoints? So I'd want to really answer my question. So even though this is my answer, right? I did all that wonderful, beautiful work. And look at that, all the reasons, it's all there. So what I would say, how far apart are the two checkpoints? I would say, where's a lovely color? Let's use blue. Um, I would say at the end, the two checkpoints are 4,920 feet apart. Boom shakalaka. That is my answer. We did a lot of work. It's a great answer, and it's going to be in a nice little cloud to amplify how great of an answer it is. So boom, there you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and practice that. That was a lot. So um, let's practice this one. This one says you are 1,182.5 meters from the first aid station. Okay, this, do you see these lovely pictures? I drew all those little lovely things for you. Just admire my artwork. Okay, I know some of you are way better artwork than me, but this was mine lovely attempt in my geometry notes. So, okay, back to the problem. You are, so this is you, <laughs> okay. You are 
182.5 feet, 82 feet from the first aid station. What is the distance to a drink station located at the midpoint between your current location and the first aid station? Okay. All right. You, I feel like I'm missing something. You are 1,182 point feet from the first aid station. What is the distance to a drink station located at the midpoint between your current location and the first aid station? Okay, really, I just think we just need to find this. Sometimes in math problems, they have like extra information and they have like this other drink station right here. Do you see this one? But, and then they have this two kilometers, but I really don't think we need to know all that. I think that's just extra information that is in there to kind of throw us off. I, what I'm reading, you are 1,182.5 meters from the first aid station. That's us, or that's you, first aid station. What is the distance to a drink station located at the midpoint between your current and the first aid station? So yeah, we just need to know this information here. We don't need to know, that's just extra. That's trying to throw us off. So we don't really, I don't, we don't need that either. None of this stuff is needed. But what's the key word they said? It's located at the midpoint. Midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. So we know um, what's located. What is the distance to the drink, drink station located at the midpoint? So the drink station is located at the midpoint. So here, the midpoint between your current location and the first aid station. So there you go. Boom, midpoint, that means we have not one, not two, not three, but one, two, three, four, five equations that we can write. So let's go ahead and write them. Number one, we know whenever we have a midpoint that XR is equal to RY. Um, we know that the whole thing, xy, is equal to 2xr. We know that the whole thing is 2 times the other one, ry. We know we can take uh, this little half here, heck, xr, and that is the same thing as half of the entire thing, which is xy. And we can take the other one, which is ry, and that is half of the whole thing, which is xy. All right, there's our five. Okay, perfect. So, what does this what does this information give us? Okay, this problem gives us the distance of xy. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Uh, xy equals 1,182.5. And that is the given information. From there, um, what are they asking us? So that's the part we know. They give us uh, they give us x y. Um, it says, what is the distance to a drink station located at the midpoint between your current location and the first aid? So what is the distance to a drink station? So we just need to know the distance to the drink station, right? Which would be x r. So we need to find this. That's what they want us to find. They want us to find this distance, xr, right here. Okay, so they give us xy, and they want us to find xr. So um, the we're going to go to these. Okay, so they give us xy and that, and we need to find xr. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everywhere xy is. So we really, out of the five, we need to know which, which of these five equations we are going to use. So x, y. So here's x, y here. Um, and this is just the process I like to use in order to figure out which one to use. So that, those are all the places where x, y is. And they want us to find x, r. So really, we need to use the equation that has x, y, and x, r information in it. So this one has x, r. This one has XR, this one has XR, and that one doesn't. So which equation do we use? Well, if you look, this equation has both of them, so we could use this one. Or 
This equation has both of them, so we could use this one. Um, so yeah, we can choose either of those because we have, um, it, it uses both of the pieces of information, the one that we need to find and the one that we have. So how about we use this, we use this one last time, let's use this one this time, okay? So I'm gonna write that. XR is equal to one half XY. Okay, and I can write that because of the wonderful, magnificent definition of a midpoint. Boom. Okay, cool. Now I'm just gonna substitute this value in for XY. So I end up with XR equals one half. Well, what's XY? XY is this. Uh, 1,182.5. And yeah, I oh, that's substitution. I can do that because it's substitution. You always ask yourself, well, why can I do that? Well, I can do it because you can substitute. Because those things are the same thing because that's the information the problem gave us. All right, so now I just need to do this little problem right here. Um, one half times 1,182.5 is actually the same thing as 1,182.5 divided by two. So I'm gonna take that over here to the side. And I'm going to go 1,000. I'm not gonna do it in the middle of my problem because I have work here, I have all these, you know, the reasons. So I'm just gonna take it over to the side. So not clogging all this up. 1,182.5 divided by two. That's the same thing as one half times, right? Cause it's like divided by two, that's what that means anyways. Um, okay, so two does it go into one? No, it doesn't. Two does it go into 11? Yes, it does, five times. Five times two is 10. I subtract 11, take away 10 is one. I drop down the eight. Two goes into 18 nine times. Nine times two is 18. No remainder, but I drop down the two. Two goes into two one time. One times two is two. No remainder, and then I drop down the five. And then I put that decimal right there above there. Two goes into five two times. Two times two is four. Take away five, take away four is one. Um, I have a remainder, so I'm going to add a zero and drop it all down. Two goes into ten five times. Five times two is ten, and there's no remainder, so boom, there's my answer. XR is equal to 591.25, and what are we talking about? Meters? So that would be the distance to the first aid station. What is the distance to the drink? Oh, drink station. Okay, so that's my answer. Oh, what did I do just there? I just simplified. Okay, uh, what is the distance to the drink station? So I'm gonna answer it and say, um, um, it, uh, is, 591.25 meters to the drink station. So you always wanna make sure that you answer in a complete sentence when you're dealing with a story problem and they're asking you. And then, yeah, that's it. Go ahead and put a little box or something around. That is the answer. It is 500, 900, no, 591.25. 591.25 meters to the drink station. Boom shakalaka. So there you go. Make sure you have all that down in your notes. And I will see you next time. All right. See you later. Peace out.